Hi friends, welcome back to Edupedia World. The last lecture we discussed about uh, heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Today we will use those concepts to solve numericals. But before going into numerical, we will uh, learn what a calorimeter is and then we will study a very useful and very important concept which is known as the principle of calorimetry which will be used to solve numericals and using numericals we will understand the whole concept and wrap up the lecture. So let us begin with today's lecture. We will begin today's discussion with understanding what a calorimeter is. Calorie meter. So a calorimeter is basically a vessel in shape which is used to used to measure the gained or lost when a body is mixed with another body when with another so a calorimeter is basically a device which is which helps us measure the amount of heat gained or lost by a body when it is mixed with another body. Now a calorimeter normally has a made up of thin lining of copper sheet. Why so? Because copper is a good conductor and it uh, lets the whole calorimeter gain a uniform temperature very quickly. Also, copper has a very low specific heat capacity. As a result, the copper container itself does not consume a lot of heat. And the heat actually is either used to raise the temperature or lower temperature of the body in question rather than the calorimeter itself. If the calorimeter were to absorb or uh, give out a lot of heat, then we would get a lot of erroneous result. Also, arrangements are made so that the radiation losses and uh, the conduction and convectional losses are minimized. The radiation losses are minimized by polishing the outer surface. And conduction and convectional losses are minimized by uh, placing it in a material which is a poor conductor like a, a wooden case and giving it a uh, air space because air uh, layer of air reduces the conductivity so there are arrangements made so that there is no external loss of energy and there is not a lot of gain of the heat by the calorimeter itself so that we actually get how much heat is gained or lost this is the basic idea behind a calorimeter I will not go in further details. Just what you need to know is that it is a vessel which is used to measure the heat gained or lost when one thing is mixed with another thing and there are arrangements made so that it is measured precisely. Okay, so after understanding the fundamental concept of what a calorimeter is, let us jump into the principle of mixtures or principle of calorimeter calorimetry principle of mixture or principle of calorimetry what this states is that uh, when a hot body is mixed with a cold body then the hot body will give out heat and the cold body will gain heat until both of them reach a uniform temperature and if there are no external losses of the heat then the heat gained by the cold body will exactly be equal to the heat lost by the hotter body. So let me state it.
when a hot body what do i mean by hot body a body which is at a high temperature higher temperature when a hot body is mixed with a cold body the hot body will lose heat and cold body gain heat till they reach a uniform temperature okay and if there is no losses of energy if there is no energy loss then by the principle of calorimetry heat gained by cold body is equal to heat lost by warm or the hot body so this is my principle of calorimetry under no loss scenario heat gained by the cold body is heat lost by the warm body now let us mathematically see how this can be represented suppose i have two bodies one and two the body one is at a temperature t1 it has a mass m1 and uh, it has a specific heat capacity c1 the body 2 has an initial temperature T2, it has a mass M2 and it has a specific heat capacity C2. And let's say that the final temperature they attain is T. I'm saying that this is the hot body and this is the cold body. So, when we know this is hot and this is cold, what can we say? We can say that T1 is the highest temperature, T2 is the lowest temperature and since this T1, this body will lose heat and this body will gain heat, the final temperature T will be somewhere between T1 and T2. The final temperature T will be less than T1 because this body is losing heat and it will be more than T2 because this body is gaining heat. So this relation will always hold true if there is no loss of energy. Now let us see what is the heat lost by the hot body. Let me write it with a different color. Heat lost by body 1 what will be the heat loss heat loss will be mass into the specific heat capacity multiplied by the temperature difference what temperature difference the initial temperature minus the final temperature so mass is m1 the specific heat capacity is c1 and the initial temperature that is a higher temperature was T1 and final temperature is T. Similarly, heat gained by body 2 will be mass 2 times C2 times the temperature difference. Now we'll write T minus T2 because T is the higher temperature, the final temperature and T2 is the lower temperature. M2 C2 T minus T2 okay now 
what the principle of mixture or principle of calorimetry states is that this loss of heat by body 1 will be exactly equal to this gain of heat by body 2. Minus T2 because T is the higher temperature, the final temperature and T2 is the lower temperature. M2 C2 T minus T2. Okay. Now, what the principle of mixture or principle of calorimetry states is that this loss of heat by body 1 will be exactly equal to this gain of heat by body 2. So, when we take that into account, what we can write is that M1, C1, T1 minus T is equal to M2, C2, T minus T2. Now, in this relation which we got by using the principle of calorimetry, we know the masses M1, M2, we know the specific heat capacity C1, C2, we know the initial temperature T1 and T2. The only unknown is the final uniform temperature of the mixture, that is T. Since we have one equation, we have one unknown, we can do some algebraic manipulations and we can find out T, which is the final temperature. So that is how the principle of calorimetry will help us calculate the final temperature of a mixture of two things. We will see how this is applied with values in the numericals which we will discuss just uh, after this discussion. But before I jump into the discussion, I want to share a fact that uh, here we are using MC delta T everywhere. The only point you need to remember here is that the heat loss or heat gain is mc delta t when there is no change in phase. It, the lecture till now has not considered any phase change. What do I mean by phase change? I mean that uh, for an example ice getting converted to water is a phase change. But in the examples which you have considered till now we are not taking account into phase change. So, if the question states that uh, ice at minus 5 degrees Celsius gets converted to water at 5 degrees Celsius, with the knowledge till now, we cannot solve those types of questions. The only type of question that we will be able to solve with the present knowledge is that a wat a water at 5 degrees Celsius heats its, is being heated to 25 degrees Celsius. What is the heat required? There is no phase change. The idea of phase change will be discussed in uh, future lectures and once we know that we will be able to handle the phase change scenarios too. But for the time being no phase change scenario. Okay so the principle of uh, calorimetry using that we can find the final temperature of mixture. Let us directly jump into some uh, numericals and see how this can be done. This question asks us to find the final temperature of a mixture. Final temperature given that we have 100 gram of warm water at 50 degrees Celsius and that is mixed with 50 gram of cold water at 20 degrees Celsius. We are given the specific heat capacity of water as 4.2 joule per gram degree Celsius. It is already given in grams. So to begin such questions, let us, the first step is to assume the final temperature as T degree Celsius. Let the final temperature 
बी टी डिग्री सेल्सियस नाउ व्हाट डू वी हैव वी हैव द हॉट सिनेरियो वी हैव मास इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड ग्राम द टेम्परेचर हॉट इज इक्वल टू फिफ्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस and we know that the final temperature is t t initial t final is equal to t degree celsius so the heat lost heat lost will be equal to mass 100 grams multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water since this is water the hot thing is also water the cold thing is also water we will use the specific heat capacity of water in appropriate units what is the appropriate unit here since we have mass in gram specific heat capacity should also be in grams which is already provided so heat lost is equal to mass into specific heat capacity into change in temperature change in temperature this will be lower this will be higher so i'll write 50 minus t we should uh, know that we have already written heat lost so it should not be t minus 50 then it will again give a negative value rather it will be the higher temperature minus the lower temperature so if i try to simplify it we will get 420 times 50 minus t this much of joule i will leave it at this for the time being now let me see the cold water scenario what is the mass the mass is 50 grams we know that the temperature initial for the cold water is 20 degree celsius and the temperature final is t degree celsius since this is the cold water it will be gaining heat heat gained and heat gained will again be equal to mass times specific heat times since it is gaining heat we'll use final temperature minus the initial temperature mass m c t f minus t i and that will be equal to 50 grams 4.2 t f is t and t i is 20 degree celsius that will give me 210 times t minus 20 joules so the heat loss is 420 times 50 minus t and heat gained by the cold is 210 times t minus 20 now we will use the principle of calorimetry using principle of calorie metric what we can see we can say that the heat lost by the warm water is equal to heat gained by the cold water this is the fundamental definition i will use that i will write 420 times 50 minus t is equal to 210 times t minus 20 on simplifying we can directly cancel this and this will get a 2 which will imply 2 times t minus 50 is equal to t minus 20 on further simplifying we get 100 minus 2t is equal to t minus 20 that gives me 3t is equal to 120 and implies t is equal to 40 degrees celsius so the final temperature of the mixture in this case is 40 degrees celsius the whole mixture of 150 grams of water will ultimately have 40 degrees celsius Okay
Now let us uh, wrap up this section of the lecture with another example in which we will use the information provided to find the specific heat capacity rather than the final temperature. This question says that we have 100 gram of a certain metal at 70 degrees Celsius and that is added to 200 gram of water which is initially at 20 degrees Celsius. This mixture ultimately reaches a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. We are given the specific heat capacity of water. We are asked to find the specific heat capacity of the metal. So let us uh, begin with the water side. Water, what do we know? We know that the mass is 200 gram. We know that the initial temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. We know that the final temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity of water is known to be 4200 joule per kilogram degree Celsius. But uh, we know that the mass is in grams. So either we convert the mass into kilogram or the specific heat capacity into grams. What I will do is I will convert the mass into kilograms. So this mass 200 gram is equivalent to 0 0.2 kilogram. Now as I have converted it into kilogram I can directly use this value of specific heat capacity since here also we have kilogram. Now the water is being heated from 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. So what is the heat gained? Heat is being gained by water. What is it? That will be equal to M times specific heat times temperature final minus temperature initial and that will be mass is 0 0.2 multiplied with 4200 multiplied with 25 minus 20, 25 minus 20 and if we calculate that we will get 0 0.2 times 4200 times 5. That will give me 4200 joule. This is the amount of heat gained by the water to raise temperature from 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. Now let me go into the metal side. What is hap happening with the metal? Metal is being cooled down from 70 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. So let me write the known factors. The first thing that is known is the mass of the metal which is 100 gram. Since we are supposed to find the specific heat capacity in joule per kilogram degree Celsius, I will be using, I will be converting this mass into kilograms. 100 gram is 0 0.1 kilogram. Now the temperature initial was 70 degree Celsius. Temperature final is 25 degree Celsius. Specific heat capacity let it be Cm, C metal. Now the heat lost will be equal to M times C metal times T initial minus T final. Why T initial minus T final? Because it is lost. It is lost. Replacing it 0 0.1 times Cm times 70 minus 25. 70 minus 25 is 45, so it will be 4.5 cm joule. Now uh, this is the heat lost by the metal. 4200 joule is the heat gained by water. Now I will be using the principle of calorimetry. Using principle of calorimetry. What I can say is this heat gained and this heat lost will be equal. 
so heat loss 4.5 times cm will be equal to 4200 this will imply that cm that the specific heat capacity of metal is 4200 divided by 4.5 which is 933.33 so that turns out to be 933.33 joule per kilogram degree celsius so the specific heat capacity of metal is 933.33 joule per kilogram degree celsius so this is how we can use the principle of calorimetry to either find the final temperature or to find a uh, unknown which can be the specific heat capacity I would advise you to practice a lot of more numericals to understand and cement the idea but uh, this is where I will stop with today's lecture the next lecture I will jump into changes of phase and uh, the concept of heat during phase transformations till then have a great day goodbye